twisting, let's say. So, and movement also. We are in a rush to do diagnosis. Antonio Guinet teaches this hundreds of analysis to first to do yeah, diagnosis and then take a position. That's all psychology. You, know, you give them metaphors, flexible metaphors, but how does this relate to what Eric said, the breathing of the letter, the particularities of every subject? Yes, please. Steve. Uh, I Identification with the Yes. <coughs> there have been times in my life that I had to identify with breath because I was breathless. Yes. yes. Because I was anxious. Many years ago. Uh, and I was identified with breath, although I was breathless. It's a bit paradoxical, but no, it's not. It's no. It's, uh, but there are other things too about this identification of breath. Yeah. This is very interesting. You are reopening the book that Freud only opened once, I think. Yeah. Respiratory erotism. Yes. Uh, right. So one can identify. Uh, when the woman's getting a bit breathless. You identify with your breath that you're being, because we associate desire with, usually with the lack, the lack of the other, but the other is always there and then we forget. It's a nice this. way to say lack, yes. Well, I prefer the, the word parousia, that the usia, the essence, it's there. Uh, and I am adding to what you are saying, just to create a contradiction there, right. and to create a new question. It's why Lagan said that. Yes, you can do without the father. Without the father, it also means. I was going to ask you why you wiped out the sign for beyond the fathers without wiping out the sign of beyond the father. <laughs> it's the same. Huh? It's the same. We need yeah. we need uh, all psychoanalysts to turn into women without lucky. All psychoanalysts are turning into women. Well, the only thing that you lack if you are not lacking and you are in line with the unethical orientation is the responsibility of your act. That is the only thing that will destroy your breath if you don't follow it. Identification with the breath is this. Uh, putting your being, losing your body in the gap, and you're identified because the, there it's not nothing, it's not a gap, it's there, but it has a different substance, particles. Yes. Yeah, but uh, let me give you an example. Of course. And this is women with women. I have to listen yeah, to Yeah, which I think is a good thing to bring in yeah. this court. And it was one of those moments of what you were talking about of when we are an, an analyst outside of our consulting room. You are not. Perhaps it happens. Yes, so I was on a bus. I sat down on this bus next to three women about my age or a little older, obviously from East London, which is where I live as well. Working class Londoners. And the th and so you analyze the words for No, I just spotted their, their yeah. ha hairdressers so forth and heard their accents okay. and I sat down next to them because the bus was full they were sitting two and one and I sat there and a young man wearing a dress and with a beard walked past on the street <laughs> and yeah and they said to each other that's one said to the other my nephew is like that they said yes and they the three of them discussed uh, this young man they all knew who cross dresses and sings in drag clubs and so forth. And they had a long conversation going into town and I sat next to them for the length of this conversation. Just before <coughs> I got off the bus, the woman sitting in front of me to the left took out a bag of sweets, handed four sweets to her, 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 herself, her friends and me. I got off the bus and she said, thank you. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is, is women 
speaking about about the name of the. the have you been silent? Because I was silent. Okay. Time, I uh, said I, I didn't say a word. Okay. Yeah. So, but but the the yeah. candy the, mark the your presence. <coughs> mark my presence. Okay. And my presence in without speaking. In the dialogue, by by handing me the sweet. Okay. At the end. That's yeah. a very nice example. Yeah. You haven't been, you have been paid with a sweet, but yes. uh, <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. To happen and you can do anything besides. Yeah. So <laughs> that's an example yeah. of, of <laughs> what I said earlier. This yeah. I will add in Greek. Parousia means parousia. present. Yeah, that's parousia. Okay. Yes. So we need presence and not absence. Yes. I. I think this talk about whether you should be in, in a position of a man or a woman, or, I mean, I, I think that's, that's potentially, it doesn't go far enough, the way I see it. Um, I think that's almost, from my perspective, we need to move beyond that. And, and we are. I, I, well, I'm not sure where we are, because we continue about psychoanalysis is a female position and all that. For, for me, Feminine. 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 Yeah. But for me, what's, for me what's, what's more interesting is the real as productive, as opposed to or simply the real as something which is impossible. And in a sense, it's I think in terms of an ethics of the real, what we're faced with in our contemporary society is the whole question of the non-anthropomorphic. In a sense, can can the real can can the letter the letters be the thought of the real, the thought that comes from the real, in a sense, the particularity that we breathe through uh, and the way that, that we then try to act on it in a, in a way that, that that has a certain ethics. So I so so that's that's the challenge for me. That the way um, it, it's a it's a it's 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 a thinking of what how uh, it, when we were talking earlier on about what can you do with the real. It's going beyond these questions of male and female. Of course. It's going to the the non anthropomorphic, going to the real itself, which is productive. Anthropomorphic. Uh, you can say humanist, it's what are you going to do with your real and my real? It's my problem. <laughs> but uh, no, 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 the word I use is non anthropomorphic. Non anthropomorphic. Well, the non human, in other words. In other words, the question of ecology, the question of the, the, the real, uh, the, the question of the, yeah, the non anthropomorphic. No, but uh, the, 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 name, the name of the father is, um, if you like, the. the distillation that Lacan makes of the term of prejudice. In other words, we have concepts, we have preconceived ideas. Anthropocentrism, anthropomorphism is one of them. We start off with something we think we already know, we always that on other things. It seems to me the question of the letter um, and trauma. When we have the name of the father, because it marks out thresholds, it marks out standardised uh, straight lines and not natural lines, they're imposed lines. It seems that what we can, you mentioned act, acting on the letter. I think it's a matter of coming to act with the letter. So that I mean acting with the letter. Yeah, yeah. because essentially that's what, if, we, if we're it able... It on you actually. Sorry? From my experience, it acts on you. Well exactly, that's, that's the point. The thing is we have to know how to give our consent to yeah. the manner in which the, because that's how I become oriented. If I'm able to give my consent to be, if you like, instructed by the real, then yeah, I can act yeah. with the letter. Oh. And, and I no longer but. need the thresholds marked out beforehand by the name of the Father because I have something else that marks my passage and, and indicates to me that I can't go this way yeah. and I can go that way. For example, with a psychotic uh, subject, I had a particularly, let's say, exuberant um, uh, an Alizant early in my in my my work, and she really marked out the territory very solidly, very concretely. Um, she would not let me cross a threshold that would be traumatic. To her. I could feel that the, there was no way I, I couldn't even in the early years, uh, very early times, I couldn't even cut the length of the session. I didn't even try, even though she was a bit too much because it really felt so strongly that I could be cutting into her body if I cut the time. And then a short time afterwards, when I moved, she was able to accept sessions of um, half an hour. But there's something in that. And it, it wasn't something I knew. It wasn't, I mean, all the time that I was allowing extended sessions, I thought, 
that I was inadequate as an analyst, all those questions. But in fact, I couldn't cross that threshold. It was something that the real was existing, and I had to submit to it. But it taught me so that didn't have the name of the father. The name of the father was indicating the name of Lacan as well. Was indicating that I should have cut the session sooner, but it wasn't possible because the real existed otherwise. I think that's what guides us. Okay. Yeah, but once we're working with neurotics rather than the psychotics, then we can move beyond this gendering that often uh, the Kenyan argument ends up with, or it's mm -hmm. that the, the uh, anthro then move into a non-anthropomorphic way of thinking things, because the name of the father insists on all of these boundaries. First of all, the boundary of sexuality, but we can yes, get beyond right. it. That's what and I'm yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, that's right. But only in some, you know, for some, some subjects do it. Other subjects, particularly psychotic subjects, have to hang on to yeah. particular ways of thinking because they can't live right. without them. That's and right. we have to respect that. Maybe there's okay. another way I can just get, just a, quick, a very simple way of keeping this. It's the distinction between the thoughts that think I and I try to think the thoughts. When, when I try to think, I'm thinking the thoughts of the other. The I. I'm thinking the thoughts of the other. Whereas when I allow thoughts to think me, it's not the thoughts of the other, it's the letter. Mm. It's the letter that's, in a sense, it's the letter that's, that's, that, that's, in a sense, passing through. I'm using your word breath. Yeah. It's the letters that we are breathing through, which become very particular. The letter has no association with thinking. If you uh, in well, the I clinic, I disagree with you on that. Yeah. You can disagree. That's fine. But in the in the clinic, it's the more precise it gets, you can mm -hmm. actually see not only the object. The object is traveling through the discourse. The master signifies also. You can see those getting repeated. The letter also does that. It's as if it's pushing to get out. It speaks to the analyst. That's why I said last time that when somebody told me, oh, do you know how to detect master signifiers? That's a senior analyst who wanted to act like a master. And I told him, uh, in a sense, that he's wrong. Now, you don't detect master signifiers because then you reduce psychoanalysis into technique. But if you, are, you, if you are acting on the level of desire, they detect it. So the letter has this thing. It's attached to thoughts, speech, discourse, but it has this it speaks to you. And then, even though it's agree, we can have a What's the thoughts of the real? <sighs> it's, it's the inhalation of the real. Inhalation of the real? Yes. OK, but I would still say it's the inhalation. It's, it's, well, I would still say it's the thoughts of the real. You can, you can, you can equate it with an inhalation as well. Yes, I'm not, I don't okay. to disagree with that. We can, we can keep it an open question. No, but but I, I, I want to add something else. Yeah. Two things. Two things to the clinic. Yeah. Uh, your question is uh, it's a good one yeah. because it, it brings us in a position to say that psychosis, whatever, neurosis, obsessional, phobic, anything <coughs> that is there, at the end, of course, we spoke about the name of the father, but we have the plural, the names of the father, so psychotic or any of us can utilize the imaginary name of the father, which is fine, the orientation is life, but also at the end of analysis, the material that we use, whatever is in the session, it uh, comes from the, the analysis, so it doesn't matter, that's, that's, that's a desire, you know? and uh, well, it's from Richard Klein has a brilliant paper on paranoia and so you can see the, the traveling, the movement of the object from the rear of the body of the schizophrenia, because the whole body is real there, going to a paranoid position, which is, it means basically that the, another is constructed, a different type of other, and that pluralizes what holds uh, the weight of the object, is not only the body. So, this construction, so we can see movement. Who, where does the object take goes to this process? Yes, he's paranoid now, but what about these things, this way, this juice? So we have a plural there. We need yeah. a lot of stuff. But, but still, yes. isn't there think, I mean, thinking in breath? Yes. Yeah, there's thinking in the body. So there's thinking in 
breath, yeah. or breath means body, or breath means spirit. They're still thinking in it. Yeah, the cutting. I mean, the breath. I'm, the breath. I'm, I'm mentioning it's is not the organism. Lacan is very clear about it, and yeah. there is a brilliant book by Miller when he speaks about Lacanian biology. Uh, you cannot find it. It's, it's in French, in Greek. I don't know if they have it in English. Uh, but it's beautiful there. And I can also in the psychosis, he speaks about uh, the psychotic having a body without organs, but he puts language there, in the dimension of the organ. But the breath is about the subject of the signifier. The subject of the signifier, the, that figure of speech. How does it breathe uh, in life? Not only in terms of the body, you can experience the breath in your body because signifies that touch to you and you have your anxiety, whatever, mm. that's different, uh, in a sense, but the breath is where it used to be a big hole, but I stand there and I desire and therefore I act. And I would just add two things and we can talk further if you want. I, I wrote empty speech there. The speaking corpse is a speaking being who does not act. An empty speech it's not because you cannot say anything. It's whatever you say, whatever you discover, whatever you do with your signifiers. If there is no act there towards life, towards whatever analyst or no analyst, it's still an empty speech. It's still an act of speech. Empty speech. It's an act of speech, but it's an empty speech. If you have trust. For closure of life, yes, there is no act there. It's an empty speech. There is the direction. You need breath to speak. You need breath to speak, the space, whatever, but uh, to find your own space and, in a good case scenario, to replace the object with a cost. That's what stabilizes a lot of psychology also. Can you go back to that quote you gave us? You said the cut. I, I don't know whose quote it was. The cut gives way. I wouldn't have that person as an artist. No, I know, but who was it who said that? So I'm not going to tell you who said that. Oh, the cut gives way to the signifier, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, but I, I know it's not your quote. But he said it's a letter, but... Uh, the, he said letter. The way they, not they, some of people, which is fine, we can argue yeah. with them, just for the sake of argument, oh, but because we like to buy it. But I think there's truth in that, the cut does give way to the letter, but also the cut creates a space, so it's got this double yeah. function How does of the letter and the space. The letter can, in, the, in that sense that is meant, it can be at the place of the object mm -hmm. as well. The way I'm explaining the letter has nothing to do with repetition. You made the cut, okay, here, and then what's happening in the session, in the clinic? More material comes up. And the, the same, the master signifier, what is happening to it, it has less stasis. How do you stasis? Stasis. Status. No, stasis. Stasis. Rest. Less rest. Okay. Fixer. Fixer. Freud. It's fixer, right? When you make the cut, new material appears. It's the same signifier, so it gets. Uh, polysemousness, more mm -hmm. meanings, more movement, so it decondenses, it loses its condensation. You can see the change in the dreams also, but it still signifies, it's still the master signifies, it's not the letter. So it's kind of open way for new material to come. But if you think of it in terms of the real, a yes. cart makes a mark, yes. and what do we make letters out of marks? And these things repeat, don't they, throughout the registers? Yeah. The signifiers repeated, the letter I But it also make. makes a scoring, it makes an emptiness. But also it makes a sense of being there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got a positive and a negative at the same time. Well, you have to do a lot of those. Whatever. A lot of these cuts and then the space is desire, it's created, it's not just by one. I mean, you don't make a or whatever. Sometimes some of our interventions, they have permanent effects. You can feel that, even at the level of the flesh. But uh, this, if you take it in a series of sessions, like to construct the other, most of the times, to speak about this person's relationship with the other, this subject's relationship with the other, you need to consider 
uh, lots of sessions together. Some, sometimes, most of the times, you cannot do it like mm -hmm. in one session. Uh, that's why good supervisor.